Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be providing an update on ESE Entertainment. This is a company we've covered extensively on the channel, and they just came out with really exciting Q2 results for 2022. Now before we get into it, please take a second, hit the like button you guys, it's a huge help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And let me know in the comments section below if you're currently holding shares of ESE, what you thought about their Q2 numbers, and how you think they stack up to some of the other players in this space. Now I personally respond to each and every comment, so this is a great way to get a hold of me, and I'd love to hear from you. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're gonna be providing an update on ESE Entertainment Incorporated, trades here in Canada on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol ESE.V and in the United States on the OTC Exchange under the ticker ENTEF. Now ESE is a company that we've covered quite a few times on the channel previously. We initially started covering this company about six months ago when it was trading in the $1.50 range. You can see back in January. And since then, the company has pulled back quite dramatically essentially cutting their share price in half and I think this really is starting to present a great buying opportunity if you're looking for exposure to the gaming industry. Now ESE Entertainment offers a diversified portfolio of different businesses that are all involved in the entertainment, gaming and digital gaming space. And as we're gonna talk about in today's presentation, as we start to go through their Q2 2022 results, this company is in an extremely high growth phase. They're now putting up record revenue, and I think a lot of investors are really gonna to start to take notice. And that's exactly what you can see here. This is as of close on June 15th, so Wednesday, June 15th. You can see they're up 18 cents on the day, or just under 30% on the trading session to close out at 83 cents Canadian. And if we actually zoom into a five day chart, you can see ESE Entertainment bottomed out at about 64 cents. And if you zoom into a one day, you can see it really wasn't until later in the trading session, about halfway through the trading session that shares really started to rally. And we saw that big spike in share price. So obviously a lot of anticipation for the earnings that we're gonna talk about in today's presentation. Now based on this share price, ESE Entertainment is now trading in the range of about 50 to $60 million in terms of market cap. So compared to some of the other players in this space, really trading at a fraction of the market cap, and again, presenting a great buying opportunity if you're looking for exposure to the gaming industry. Now, as mentioned in the intro, we have covered ESE Entertainment quite extensively on the channel. So we initially did our deep dive on this company about six months ago. You can see they were trading in the $1.50 range. We then covered the big Corsair Gaming ESE Entertainment partnership about four months ago. And just recently here, two months back, we covered the Q1 Financial 2022 results from ESE Entertainment, at which point the company was trading just north of $1 Canadian. So this is gonna be a great update in the series and this is starting to become one of the most popular or most well-followed stocks on the McNally Money channel. And again, compared to our previous updates, you're now able to acquire shares at a fraction of the price you could only a few months ago. Now, if we jump over to the company website, and for those of you who maybe missed our previous coverage on ESE Entertainment, if we go to the About Us section, I'll leave a link in the video description below. You can see ESE Entertainment is combining multiple gaming and esports assets to create a single world-class brand. ESE Entertainment is a global entertainment and technology company with a focus on bringing high quality players to video game developers, media rights relating to esports, physical and digital content creation, and distribution of esports related content. ESE is focused on bridging Europe, Asia, and North America. The company was founded back in 2019 by Conrad Wasuela, a former professional football player. So we actually talked about his backstory in one of our previous videos. Really interesting guy and brings a lot to the table here in terms of his competitive edge. Today, ESE has grown to consist of multiple assets and world-class operators in the gaming and esports industries. 
Our capabilities include, but are not limited to, physical infrastructure, broadcasting, global distribution for gaming and esports related content, advertising, sponsorship support, and a growing esports team franchise. And we've actually broken out all of these subsidiaries or various different business units in our initial deep dive. So again, I would encourage you to go back and take a closer look or take a watch of that video if you wanna get more detail about the various components of ESC Entertainment. Now, if we double click on the CEO and founder, Conrad Wasuela, again, a former professional football player in the CFL, so Canadian Football League, the equivalent of the NFL here in Canada. He played for a number of teams, so the BC Lions, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and the Montreal Alouettes, and actually attended the University of British Columbia, which is the same place I went to get my degree. Throughout his business ventures and international holdings, Mr. Wasuela has worked alongside global leaders in the gaming and entertainment industry. This included successful collaborations with EA Sports, Flutter Entertainment, Take-Two Interactive, Full Tilt Poker, Betfair, and RGA, which stands for Remote Gaming Association. So really connections and interactions with some of the biggest players in the gaming space, whether we're talking about online poker, traditional console gaming, or even mobile gaming. Now with that being said, and before we get into the Q2 2022 results, I will do a quick refresher on the portfolio or the various different business units within ESE Entertainment. So again, they're based in Europe here, you guys. They're a European-based esports organization with physical and digital assets across the globe. And some of these key assets include Game Addict. So this company is really focused on creating and executing its performance model technology software to generate users and increase the reach of games for its customers. So primarily for video game developers. Frenzy is ESE's media production company, which focuses exclusively on the video game industry. So really looking at creating and executing esports and gaming events, broadcasts and media content. We then have Digital Motorsports. So Digital Motorsports is actually the one that's partnered up with Corsair Gaming. They're really an industry leader in simulated racing or race simulator solutions and specialize in building custom racing simulators and offering turnkey simulator packages. So Digital Motorsports has key vendor distribution rights and partnerships in the industry ranging from F1 to WEC, WRC, drifting and many more. Now WPG or World Performance Group is a Canadian and European based infrastructure business for management of fan engagement for OTT and esports games. So really focused on building the customer's brand, boosting retention, enhancing offsite fan interactions and improving the ROI or return on investment. And then finally we have Virtual Pit Stop which is focused on technology for video game developers, racing fans, and gamers to engage in motorsports related esports. So very complementary to digital motorsports. And then finally is Kick Esports. So this is actually a pioneering esports organization, again, based in Europe. And Kick manages esports teams that compete across multiple games and platforms, including League of Legends, FIFA, Apex Legends, and many more. So this is actually their gaming team or gaming team division. And all of these pieces together combined to form ESE Entertainment and their final subsidiary of ESE Gaming. And again, I know that was a quick review and I would highly encourage you to go in and take a closer look for yourself, whether you wanna watch my initial deep dive or take a look at the company website, again, linked in the video description below. So on a combined basis, you guys, or a holistic basis, these different divisions create a 360 solution for the gaming and esports industry. So they've got video game marketing, media production, infrastructure and support, e-commerce and technology, and their esports teams and leagues through Kick. And again, that all combines to the ESE overall portfolio. So really a multifaceted approach to the gaming sector or a multi-prong approach to this space. And the thing I like so much about that is you're actually getting inherent diversification just by owning shares of ESE Entertainment. Okay, so now on to the main event here, you guys. ESE Entertainment reports second quarter 2022 results, and the numbers here really are quite impressive. So some of the highlights, record revenue of $15 million, which represents a year-over-year -year increase of just about 2,000%. So that type of revenue growth really is unheard of, you guys. Of any of the companies we cover on the channel, quadruple digit revenue growth is phenomenal. So $15 million of top line quarterly revenue for Q2, record gross profit of $3.8 million, 
which is a year over year increase of 2,748%. So again, absolutely massive year over year comparables here, you guys. And record adjusted EBITDA of $885,000. So across the board, very impressive numbers from ESE Entertainment for the second quarter of 2022. Now, as we continue to scroll through the article, you can see some of the more detailed highlights and operational highlights. So revenue again, $15 million, which is compared to only 720,000 in Q2 of last year. So again, nearly 2000% increase. Gross profit came in at $3.8 million, again, up nearly 2,800% from only $130,000 in Q2 of last year. Adjusted EBITDA, $885,000 as we just talked about compared to a loss of almost the same amount, $832,000 loss in Q2 of last year. So when you're looking at year over year comparables, truly a tremendous shift. And this is exactly why I think the investment community is gonna start to take notice and we're gonna see a shift in trend in terms of the share price movement. Now total assets as of April 30th, 2022, so the end of Q2 stood at $38 million. Again, market cap on this company, you guys, is in the range of only 50 to 60 million. That's compared to $16 million in assets as of Q2 of last year. And as we see here in a quote from Conrad, again, the CEO of ESE, we are excited to share our Q2 2022 financial performance with shareholders ahead of schedule, which is our seventh straight quarter in a row of record growth. This was the first quarter that included the financial performance of our most recent acquisition, Game Addict, which we're gonna talk about towards the end of the presentation in our near-term catalyst slide. The combined operations have proven to deliver record revenue growth, improve margins, and reach a critical milestone of achieving positive EBITDA for the first time in company history. This performance is a testament to our entire team, which continues to execute at the highest level and deliver on our business plan and growth strategy. As we start to unlock synergies of combined operations, we are setting our sights on continued organic growth. So again, really a major turning point for the company and they've now hit that critical mass. They're generating positive EBITDA, they're bringing in record revenue and they're starting to see all these different business units really act synergistically with one another. Now the next section here talks about some of the operational highlights. So in addition to those impressive financial results, there's also a number of key operational takeaways from the quarter. So they announced a partnership with Opera, one of the world's major browser developers and a leading internet consumer brand. The agreement focuses on providing advertising services in connection with the promotion of Opera GX, Opera's gamer-oriented browser. So that's a key development for this company. They completed the acquisition of Game Addict, adding new technology to ESE's global 360 sports business. Again, we're gonna touch on that in a second here. They appointed the founder and CEO of Game Addict, so a byproduct of that acquisition, Eric as Chief Operating Officer, so COO of ESE Entertainment. So they're acquiring that experience and expertise and folding that into the bigger management organization. They announced that the company's subsidiary, Digital Motorsports, which we looked at, signed a reseller agreement with Corsair Gaming. So that big partnership we've covered in one of our previous updates, a leading global developer and manufacturer of high performance gaming gear. So very complimentary. They announced that their media division, Frenzy, is launching a new broadcast studio in Warsaw, Poland. And the first project produced from this new studio will be called VRL East Surge, a competition in the game of Valorant carried out in 20 different countries around the world. They announced that they've now started a new division of their business focused on expanding their existing business products and services to the internet gambling space or the iGaming space. And again, this is a near term catalyst for the company that we're gonna touch on. They signed a partnership agreement with Waveform Entertainment Incorporated, which is a highly regarded esports entertainment company with clients or a client list that includes ESL Gaming, DreamHack, Ubisoft, Red Bull, and some of the biggest companies or brands in this space. And finally, or last but not least, they announced a partnership agreement with Kawana, which is a highly regarded European esports entertainment company with clients that include, again, some big names in this space, which include Bethesda Softworks, Capcom, NVIDIA, BenQ, and many more. So a number of key operational updates, obviously a very busy quarter for Conrad and the leadership team. So really starting to see all of the various different business units within the ESE entertainment portfolio or under their umbrella 
come together in a very complimentary way. So overall, you guys, super impressed with these numbers, a phenomenal quarter, both on the financial side of things and on the operational side of things for ESC Entertainment, and a lot to be excited about if you're invested in this company or looking to make a potential investment. So now that we've talked about the exciting Q2 numbers from ESC Entertainment, I wanted to take a step back and look at the gaming market holistically or the overall market opportunity here on a global scale. So revenue of the global gaming market currently sits at $178 billion, that's as of 2021, and it's expected to grow to $268 billion by 2025. So obviously this got a big kickstart or big boost during the pandemic. A lot of people really started gaming and we're starting to see that trend continue over the next few years so a huge TAM or total addressable market and again ESC Entertainment is going after all parts of this value chain now with that being said it's estimated there's now 2.9 billion players in the global video game market so in terms of population just about half of the world now plays some sort of video game and if you look at the percentage of gamers by region again based on 2021 about 51 percent of these come from the APAC region or Asia Pacific about a quarter of gamers come from the EMEA, which stands for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. About 15% from Latin America. And North America currently only represents about 10% of the global gamer audience. So this really speaks to the fact or gives a good rationale as to why ESE Entertainment is really focused on the European market. So to finish things off here, I wanted to jump over to the updated investor presentation. This is their Q2 investor deck and talk about some of the future and upcoming growth catalysts that you may want to keep an eye on if you're looking to make an investment or are currently invested in ESE Entertainment. So again, they completed the acquisition of Game Addict. Game Addict produced revenue of about $24 million and income from operations of $4.7 million during fiscal 2020. So already a very healthy business and a great complement or addition to the ESE portfolio. They add new technology and capabilities, proprietary technology and systems to help video game developers reach more users and they currently reach about 30 million qualified gaming users monthly through their publisher network, enabling the company or Game Addict to register over 300,000 new high value players every month for its customers. So really a lot of traction in the gaming space and we can actually see examples of that in this investor presentation. So Roblox, Game of Thrones, Forge of Empires and Raid, hundreds of thousands if not millions of new players have been added as a result of Game Addict activity. So next up is actually their entrance into the iGaming space. So the company will evaluate a plan to expand its business offerings to iGaming, which they feel may be synergistic with the existing assets subject to further business and regulatory due diligence. So iGaming is any activity that involves betting online. So for example, betting on live sports events or game outcomes and things like online betting, online casino gambling and skill-based games like poker or blackjack. So this is super exciting. We've talked about a number of companies in this space on the channel previously, and this could represent a huge growth and revenue opportunity for ESE on the horizon. Now the final catalyst they lay out in the investor presentation is obviously the metaverse. So this is an area that a lot of companies have really been talking up and focusing on over the last couple of quarters. So ESE Entertainment is currently sizing up this opportunity. They're gonna evaluate a plan to expand its business offerings to the metaverse, which again may be synergistic to the existing business assets. And this is another massive catalyst I see for this company, not only over the next couple of quarters, but really for decades to come, as individuals, customers, and video game players continue to migrate into these digital universes and really start to spend more of their time in these environments. So with that being said, you guys, that wraps up today's presentation. Huge results from ESE Entertainment for Q2 2022. And again, a big congrats to the leadership team and Conrad for the great results. A number of things to keep our eyes on over the next couple of quarters in terms of near-term catalysts for this company or potential growth opportunities. And again, based on this share price pullback we've seen over the last couple of months, you're now able to acquire shares at a fraction of the price you could have only a couple of months ago. So I'd be super curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think of ESE Entertainment, the Q2 results we discussed in today's presentation, and whether or not you're currently holding shares or planning on picking up shares in the near future. If you're still watching the video at this point, hopefully you found some value, so make sure you hit the like button before you leave. 
And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to do so. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.